King's kids. It's so nice to have you all back here again. Arnie here from Arnie's Shack. I uh, really enjoy being able to catch up with you all each week. Uh, so, sons and daughters of the King of the Universe, are you all ready for today's adventure? Uh, we are going to be looking in the Bible today at Acts chapter 9. Uh, it is a very interesting story about how God loves everyone so much and how his love and grace can even overcome everything. Uh, we are looking back at the time just after Jesus went back to heaven and the new believers were sharing God's message of love with everyone they met. Uh, some people were not very happy about this and were trying to stop them. Uh, one person in particular, Saul, uh, was determined to round up and get rid of all Jesus' followers. Uh, the verse to remember this week comes from Jeremiah 31.3. It says, oh, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Uh, what a great verse to learn and remember. Uh, do you know what everlasting means? Uh, it means that it goes on forever. How incredible is that? Uh, God's love for us is forever. Uh, he loves everyone, even Saul who is in our story today. Even though he was doing bad things, he was so loved by Jesus that, uh, well, I won't tell you what he did. Uh, you will just have to watch today's episode and find out. Uh, make sure you open your Bible and read this story for yourself later on too. Uh, anyway, uh, let's get on with it. the Bible. Do you have time now to do some more? Yeah, for sure, Gemma. Let's see what we can find out today. We're looking at Acts chapter 9. Okay, here we go. I think we are back in Jerusalem, Sammy. And that is the upper room. I can't see any of the disciples or the other believers here, though. That's strange. I wonder where they are. Here comes a man I've never seen before. Open up now. I am Saul and I have orders from the high priest. You followers of Jesus are breaking the Jewish law. Repent now or you will face the same fate as Stephen. All followers are to repent or die. No matter where you run, I will find you. Open up. I demand that you open this door now. Well, it seems they have run away. They think they have outsmarted me, 
but I have heard many of them have headed to Damascus. With this letter of authority from our high priests, I can now go to Damascus and round them up. We will get rid of these followers of Jesus. Oh no, Sammy, that sounds terrible. Did Stephen die? He was a man of such faith. Saul sounds like he wants to get rid of anyone who is a follower of Jesus. All the believers from Jerusalem must have had to run away so that Saul did not get them. If they are in Damascus though, they will not be safe, as it sounds like Saul is heading there next. Today's memory verse comes from... Jeremiah 31 verse 3. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Hi everyone, my name is Nurse Betty. One of the things I love to do is to teach boys and girls how to stay healthy. And today, I'm going to talk with you about medicine. At my clinic, I give medicines all day long. Have you had to take medicine? Some children need medicine every day to keep their bodies well. In the Bible it says that a cheerful heart is like good medicine. That means that when we choose to be happy and cheerful, it makes our bodies feel good too. This medicine is the best. When you make your bed with a cheerful heart and feed your pets with a cheerful heart, you share your cheerfulness everywhere. You can't share normal medicine, but being cheerful can be shared to everyone in your home and all your friends as well. Proverbs 17:22 says, A happy heart is like good medicine, but a broken spirit drains your strength. Boys and girls, remember that Jesus loves you. Take care of your body and take care of each other. My name's Ella, and this is my little brother Zane. Today, we're going to be making paper lanterns. The things that you'll need are paper, scissors, a battery light, and sticky tape or a stapler. First, you're going to cut a little bit off um, the paper, and this is gonna be the handle. Now that you've finished your handle, put it aside. Then you're going to fold your paper long ways. Now that you've finished folding it, you're gonna cut on the side that doesn't open. A bit more than halfway would be good. Now that you've finished cutting it, you're going to open it and turn it so that it's facing portrait. Then you're going to roll it. Now that you've finished rolling it, you're going to grab your sticky tape or stapler and join it. Now that you've finished making the base of your lantern, you're going to grab this handle that you made earlier and join it onto the base of the lantern. Now that you've finished making your lantern, all you have to do is grab your battery light and put it inside. Zane, would you like to turn it on? Yeah. Thanks, Zane. Zane, would you like to put the lantern on top? Yeah. How about you go and make your own lantern to remind you that God never stops loving you and that He is the light in your darkness. What do you think, Zane? Jesus is the light. Me too. It was an exciting but challenging time. 
Believers of Jesus were preaching the good news and the gospel was spreading all over the region and beyond. Yet, the more the good news spread, the more some people began to hate those spreading it. Saul was a small but dangerous man. He was making it his mission to hunt down and throw in prison anyone who shared about or believed in Jesus. He had even gone to the high priest and asked for letters to the Jewish leaders in Damascus so he could capture believers there and bring them back to Jerusalem. Damascus was a long way from Jerusalem. I wonder what made Saul so keen to travel that far just to hurt those who believed in Jesus. But now, with the group of men, Saul was making that journey. The trip took many days. The terrain was rough. The route was long and exhausting. The road rough and dusty. But now, as they neared Damascus, Saul's determination to capture the followers of Jesus grew stronger. Suddenly, without warning, a bright and strong light shone down around Saul, causing him to fall to the ground. Saul, Saul, why are you hurting me? Who are you, Lord? I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. I wonder what Saul felt as he was in that moment. Fear, wonder, shame. Whatever he felt, he was the start of a change in him. What do you want me to do? Get up and go to Damascus. There you will be told what you must do. Saul tried to raise himself from the ground, but as he did, he discovered that he could no longer see. His men led him by the hand into Damascus. The mighty Saul had seen the light of God. A single moment had changed everything. Saul remained blind for three days. And for three days he refused to eat or drink. I wonder what was going through his mind as he lay there waiting to know what he must do next. Hello boys and girls, it's Granny Grace here with another story from God's special book. Have you ever been bullied by someone? Maybe a big kid at school? How did it make you feel? Today our story is about a little man who was a big bully and how God changed him. Saul was a little man, but he was a big bully. Bullies like to pick on people. And who did Saul pick on? He picked on the new believers in Jesus. He went to their houses and put them in jail. He arrested them in the marketplace and had them whipped. Yes, Saul hated the Jesus followers. The Jewish leaders hated the Jesus followers too. So when Saul asked, can I go to the city of Damascus and hunt down the Christians there? The leaders said, yes, please go and stop this nonsense about Jesus. The next day, Saul set off along the road with some helpers. It was a long way to Damascus. It was hot and it was boring. But suddenly, a bright light shone out of the sky. Saul and the others fell to the ground. Then a voice spoke out of the light, Saul, Saul. Saul tried to peer into the light to see who was speaking. Why are you persecuting me? 
asked the voice. Who are you, Lord? asked Saul. Now, boys and girls, I think deep down in his heart, Saul knew who it was, but he wanted to hear it from the voice. The voice spoke again. I am Jesus, who you are persecuting. Go into the city and you'll be told what to do. Then the light vanished. Saul felt it vanish, but he didn't see it vanish because Saul was blind. He couldn't see. His world was black. Saul the bully was now Saul the blind bully. But something was happening to Saul. Changes were happening inside his heart. The light of Jesus was changing him. Saul the bully was just Saul, the man who couldn't see. And you know what? The light of God can shine into your life and change it too. Jesus died upon the cross. Jesus died upon the cross. Gave his life to save the lost. Gave his life to save the lost. Cause he loves you and me. Cause he loves you and me. And he wants to set us free. And he wants to set us free. Follow Jesus cause I know. Follow Jesus cause I know. It's the best way to go. Do you know what you've got to do? Do you know what you've got to do? Cause this is what I'm telling you. Cause this is what I'm telling you. Read your Bible every day. Read your Bible every day. Take the time to stop and pray. Take the time to stop and pray. Follow Jesus cause I know. Follow Jesus cause I know. It's the best way to go. Jesus died upon the cross. Jesus died upon the cross. Gave his life to save the lost. Gave his life to save the lost. Cause he loves you and me. Cause he loves you and me. And he wants to set us free. And he wants to set us free. Follow Jesus cause I know. Follow Jesus cause I know. It's the best way to go. Do you know what you've got to do? Do you know what you've got to do? Cause this is what I'm telling you. Cause this is what I'm telling you. Read your Bible every day. Read your Bible every day. Take the time to stop and pray. Take the time to stop and pray. Jesus, cause I know. Follow Jesus, cause I know. It's the best way to go. Follow Jesus, cause I know. Follow Jesus, cause I know. It's the best way to go. Where are we now, Sammy? We are on the side of the road somewhere, Gemma. I wonder where those people were travelling to. Oh no, look who it is. That is the mean man Saul. I bet he is on his way to Damascus to get rid of Jesus' followers. Saul! Saul! Why are you hurting me? Who who are you, Lord? I am Jesus, whom you are trying to hurt. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. Saul, Saul, are you okay? That was a really bright light, and the sound was louder than thunder. Where are you? Did you hear that voice? I'm right here in front of you. I can't see anything. Well, let me help you up. I am blind. Could you please lead me? I have to go to Damascus and someone there will tell me what to do. I have been so wrong. I have been hurting Jesus' followers. Jesus spoke to me. Saul, take my arm and I will lead you. I have been so wrong. I feel so bad. What the Christians say is true. Jesus is alive. Wow, did you see that? Jesus actually spoke to Saul as he was heading to Damascus to hurt Jesus' followers. And Saul is now blind. 
I wonder what will happen when he gets to Damascus now. For three days he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. Hey Andy, let's pray. Dear God, please guide us. Thank you. How about I start, Shane? Now you can start. We've been reading from Acts 9, 1 to 9. Saul was still threatening God's disciples and he talked to the high priest and got letters from the synagogues in Damascus so that if he found any believers, man or woman, he could take them to Jerusalem as prisoners. As he came to Damascus, a light flashed all around him and he fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, why do you persecute me? He yelled out, who are you? And Jesus said, oh, I'm Jesus. So get up and go to Damascus and, and there I'll tell you what to do. And when he got up, he couldn't see and he stayed like that for three days and didn't drink or eat or anything. Yeah, wow. Shane, let's do the Discovery Bible questions. Yeah, OK. Yeah, they're a great way to learn new things from the Bible. Oh, they are. So what's new? Well, Andy, it's amazing that everyone that was there with Saul heard the voice and sounds as well, but they couldn't see anything. Hey, Andy, what surprises you? Well, Shane, I'm surprised that only Saul was blinded by the light. God must have had a special message just for him and him alone. Yeah, God singles us out sometimes to make sure he gets the message through. Yeah. So Shane, what don't you understand? Well, Andy, what I don't understand is why was Saul trying to arrest the followers of Jesus? Yeah, Shane, that's a good point. You know, I don't understand that either. Well, Andy, um, what will you obey or reply? Well, I'm going to try to listen to what God wants before he has to do something like blind me so that I will listen. So Shane, what will you share with someone this week? Well, what I think I'll share with someone this week is that Paul had a passion for what he did, but God wanted to turn that passion around to do his will, just like he wants for us. He wants us to use our passions for his service. Yeah, that's a good idea. So let's pray to finish, shall we? Yeah, let's do that. Dear God, thank you for your word. Help us to follow you. Amen. Amen. Well, see you next week, Shane. See you next week, Andy. Jesus died upon the cross. Uh, he gave his life to save the lost uh, because he loves you and me. 
and he wants to set us free. I'm going to follow Jesus because I know that it really is the best way to go. Uh, even when Saul was off trying to get rid of Jesus' followers, Jesus didn't give up on him. Uh, he stopped Saul on the road and spoke to him. Uh, when Saul realised what he had been doing, he was very sad and sorry. Uh, what a great lesson for us to learn, uh, that no matter where we are or what we are doing, Jesus wants us to follow him too. Uh, he never ever gives up on us. Uh, Jesus appeared to Saul on the road to Damascus, shone a bright light and spoke to Saul. Uh, there are many other ways that Jesus tries to get our attention today and let us know how much he loves us and wants us to follow him. Uh, we can hear about Jesus through other people, like when the followers of Jesus were going out telling those they met about Jesus. Uh, we can learn about Jesus through reading our Bible. Uh, we can get to know Jesus by talking to him when we pray. Uh, when we are outside in nature, we can also discover more amazing things about God too. Uh, you know, now is a great time to stop and talk to Jesus. Uh, thank him for loving you. Say sorry for the times you have let him down and ask him what he would like you to do. Uh, just like the song we just sung, bow your head, close your eyes, and stop and pray to our wonderful Father God. Uh, anyway, uh, time to go now, King's Kids. Uh, take care, stay safe, and God bless. See you next time.